Hi, and welcome to the Center of Applied Space Technology and Microgravity. We are the operator of the biggest microgravity lab in Europe and our customers come from all over the world to conduct their microgravity experiments here. We also do all sorts of research right here at ZAM. Besides fluid mechanics, space technology, combustion research and much more, we also have a lab for Prepare Yourselves Applied Space Microbiology. Heading the research group is Cyprien Versu, and he's also the one going to tell us today what his research is about. Cyprien, what do you do in your laboratory? So at the Laboratory of Applied Space Microbiology, we're trying to develop biotechnologies in support of future missions to Mars. Because when humanity goes to Mars, we need to provide astronauts with large amounts of food, water, oxygen and all the things that humans need to survive. And if we talk about sustainable missions to Mars, then all that cannot come from Earth um, because of the price per kilogram of a payload sent to Mars and because there is always a risk that a resupply mission fails. So instead, what we're trying to do is to find a way to produce what we need on site from what is already there. When a crew must rely on the local resources found on Mars, how does your concept for a life support system work? Yeah, one of the key components in the concept I described is cyanobacteria, which are basically green microorganisms that can do photosynthesis like plants. And the reason why we're interested in them is that some species we think could be grown almost directly with what we find on Mars, because they need carbon and nitrogen like any organism, and those can be found in the Martian atmosphere in a form that the cyanobacteria can use. They also need water, and water could be mined on Mars from the ground and the atmosphere. Um, they also need sunlight, and we have sunlight on Mars, okay, a bit less than on, on, on Earth, but on top of the atmosphere, we have about 43% of what we get on average on Earth. Uh, but then they need a lot of other uh, small nutrients like iron, magnesium, and so on, and those are present in the Martian regolith, the Martian soil, and the cyanobacteria we're using could use them, uh, could extract them from the regolith. Okay? And then once we've grown the cyanobacteria, we can use them for different things. We can use them directly to make oxygen, for instance, for the astronauts, but also indirectly to make nutrients for other organisms like plants or other microbes. which in turn could produce different compounds of interest, for instance, food or medication. So you can think of it as a small scale ecosystem, which is based indirectly on what we find on Mars and that can produce a lot of things that we need to survive. You and your team have recently published your latest findings in a scientific paper. What have you discovered and is there a master bacterium? Yeah, so the, the goal of that recent publication was to find a good model cyanobacterium because there are thousands of species of cyanobacteria and not all of them would be equally useful for that project. So we really wanted to find maybe not the best possible species because you know we never know, there could always be one that we haven't seen, but at least a very good model that could be used for that work. I am curious, how did you conduct your research? How did you get to the results? So first we looked at the literature to identify some good candidates and we then selected to five species. Then we took those five species and we performed a series of tests in the laboratory to compare them. For instance, we compared their ability to use a simulant of Martian regolith as a source of nutrients. Uh, we compared their resistance to some toxic compounds found on Mars. We looked at how well they could support the growth of other organisms. We also looked at the genome, at the DNA, to try to see whether we could find some, some toxic uh, gene or genes that would lead to toxic compounds, which would not be good. So in short, we, we assess them based on criteria that pertain to the ability to use Martian resources and then to feed other organisms. And in the end, we selected Anabenize PPCC 7938. I guess you are not done yet. So, what are your next steps? 
With this article and some other studies we did before, we have a proof of concept that suggests that cyanobacteria could indeed be fed with resources found on Mars and used to feed other organisms. But knowing that it works at all is not enough. Now we need to see how well it works and whether we can also make it work better. Um, we also want to understand the biological mechanisms, understand why this cyanobacterium is so good at doing what it's doing. And eventually we would like to have practical solutions that can be sent to Mars. Cyprien, thank you very much. We are looking forward to hearing more from you and your team.